morning. So tonight we're going to be able to let you get home reasonably early. But I'm also going to invite you to Grand Bay tomorrow for a big, big meeting in Grand Bay with that winning candidate, Nep Packet. So I'm putting out this invitation very early to you. We will be in Grand Bay tomorrow starting from 6.30. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mike Wallace and I'm here this evening. My job is to chair this meeting. I will be presenting the speakers. I have made it certain that we will have a reasonably short lineup so that you can get to your homes before, hopefully before the weather gets any worse. Ladies and gentlemen, it is always a pleasure to be here in the Roseau Central constituency in the city of Roseau. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, as we assemble and call the meeting to a start, it is important that we welcome the Almighty Father into our midst, thank him for the day that we have had, and pray that we will have a pleasant evening and be ready for the next day. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who will lead us in prayer this evening hails from the Grand Four constituency. I want to welcome and ask you to welcome Brother Augustus Lewis to lead us in prayer. I ask you to give us a moment of silence. Yeah, good evening. That's Reverend the Almighty God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this day. We want to thank you for life. We want to thank you for health. We want to thank you for your traveling mercies that you have bestowed upon us. Most of all, Lord, we want to thank you for being with us thus far in this campaign. And Lord, you know we are your children. And you know we are on the bondage in this country, Lord. And I just ask you, Lord, as you continue to be with us, that make victory be your own. Lord, we claim victory. We claim the liberation of Dominica in your hands, Lord Jesus. Just have your own way, Lord. And whoever hears us, Lord, they make that right decision to have justice in our country, Lord. Lord, I commend Team Dominica into your hands. I commend the people of Dominica into your hands. Lord, just have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you very much, Brother Augustus Lewis, a man who has been around with UWP Team Dominica for a very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said to you earlier on, because the evening is what it is, we are going to give you a shortened version of the education that we continue to spread. The message that we continue to take throughout Dominica I understand and I know that last evening only a few, hun a few hundred meters away from here we had a very big meeting across the bridge in Roseau North constituency. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are in Roseau, South Roseau Central constituency, the constituency where you can't say no to so-so. Brothers and sisters, it is the season of election. And it is normal that during the election season, especially as we get to the home stretch 
It's normal to have multiple meetings in one night, but in particular, meetings nightly. So this is no, no exception. When we saw the weather earlier on, we considered canceling tonight's meeting, but then we decided because everything was already in place, it made more sense for us to continue, but we would keep in mind that in light of the weather, it would be nice to get our supporters and others to their homes on time, and hopefully before the weather gets any worse. So ladies and gentlemen, I will take this opportunity to welcome you in a special way. And I will also, ladies and gentlemen, say to you that it is not too long before you will be called, you will be going to the polls. In fact, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, the 6th of December is the scheduled election day or polling day, as we like to say. So one of the things I want to say to you, first of all, is that when that day comes, United Workers' Party, Team Dominica, will be our new government in this beautiful country. And what is going to mean, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to mean a fresh beginning for Dominica. A fresh beginning for development in our country that seems to have been put on hold for the last 20 years. And why do I say 20 years? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if I recall correctly, it was in January of 2000 that we changed government in this beautiful country. And we are today in 2019, just about the end of 2019. So as far as I'm concerned, we are here just on the doorstep of 20 years. The question that comes to mind, ladies and gentlemen, what has happened in the last 20 years? In those 19 or 20 years, whichever you choose to use, brothers and sisters, we have seen a country that was on a trajectory to move upwards. Ladies and gentlemen, we were at a time between 95 and 2000, Dominica experienced the greatest amount of national development that it had experienced in its history. Those of us, ladies and gentlemen, who are in around 2025, we have only known one political party in office. And you might want to think that what you have seen in the last 20 years is the norm for a political party in office. Well, this is not the case. Let me just inform you and educate you. Because prior to the United Workers' Party taking office in 1995, we will recall that the Freedom Party was in office led by Dame Eugenia for a period of 15 years. And in those 15 years, ladies and gentlemen, I make no bones in stating that Dominica experienced much more development than we have seen in the last 20 years. No question about this, ladies and gentlemen. Because, ladies and gentlemen, when we look back at the last 20 years and you ask yourself what has happened, we cannot point to anything significant that has taken place in our country. What we have seen is a little bit of facelift to roads here and there. We have seen a little, a little new thing here and there. I think the biggest things that we have seen, ladies and gentlemen, are things that we still wonder about. We saw the construction, for example, of a new bridge, or they replaced the bridge that was there. And that bridge, ladies and gentlemen, 
is a bridge that everyone agrees does not or is not worth the money we were told that was spent on it. Brothers and sisters, you will recall that a figure of $18 million was supposed to have been spent on this bridge that was put up. We heard all of the professionals in this country tell us that that bridge couldn't be any more than about 10, maybe $12 million tops. So the question is, what happened to the rest? What happened to the other six or eight million dollars, ladies and gentlemen? I am sure you will agree with me that if they told us it was spent and the professionals tell, tells us that it, it was not spent or the bridge did not cost it that amount of money, you will agree with me that that money must have gone to where it should not have gone. And you would know better than me or just as well as I do where that money actually went to. Another one that you might think about is there was the state house. And that state house, ladies and gentlemen, another 27 or 30 million dollars. And when you go there today, you will see, ladies and gentlemen, that it is a, a building that needs to be refurbished at this point because it's only been a few years but the $30 million building, you look around and you wonder what has happened. So brothers and sisters, what has happened in Dominica over the last 20 years is something that we will never forget. We will never forget the fact that in the last 20 years, the government in power has actually touched or received more money than all of the governments before put together, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going back to the days, the, the initial Labour Party, then the Freedom Party, then UWP. You combine the money that they collected and it is not even adding up to the amount of money that this government has collected in the last 20 years. So you ask yourself, why is it? Why is it? that in those 20 years, we have seen so little improvement in our country. We are at a time, ladies and gentlemen, when every other island in the OECS has done better than us economically and continues to improve annually. Ladies and gentlemen, for us in Dominica, we have continued to watch our economy spiral downward. And so today, you have, you've just heard the foreign minister, ladies and gentlemen, announced in Washington at the OS that she was pleased that Dominica is going is on, on, on schedule to have to have nine percent economic growth, ladies and gentlemen. That's a joke. It is a joke because the hurricanes, ladies and gentlemen, and the, the tropical storm, Erica, and the hurricane took away much more than 9%, ladies and gentlemen. So if we have only grown 9%, or if we are going to grow 9% this year, it means, ladies and gentlemen, that we are still backwards of, say, 2017. Backwards of 2017, but the government they're beating their chest about this as growth. This is not growth. Ladies and gentlemen, Dominica will experience economic growth. We will experience significant economic growth, a minimum of 5 to 7% annually once United Workers' Party takes office on the 6th of December, ladies and gentlemen. We can expect, ladies and gentlemen, to see Dominicans put to work once again because the United Workers Party is about jobs, jobs and more jobs. And you have heard the plans explained by the, 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 the leaders or the leadership of the party time and time again to explain how Dominica is going to experience significant economic growth. 
will be coming to take it over. What is going to make, to make the difference, ladies and gentlemen, is for us, the people of Dominica, on the 6th of December, to ensure that we vote wisely. We already know, ladies and gentlemen, all the indications are that United Workers' Party will be victorious at the polls. Ladies and gentlemen, for this reason, the responsibility that we as a people have is to ensure that we get out to vote on time. We must get to the polls very early, make sure that we vote wisely and accurately. What I mean by wisely is that we vote for change, because change is a must. And what I mean by voting accurately is that we must vote and ensure that we do not spoil any ballots because this is the trick that they're going to be using against us to say that we've got spoiled ballots. You remember the elections of 2014 and 2009, ladies and gentlemen. This was what they used as a strategy. You remember when we had our candidates, they won the election the night of the initial count, but by the following day, they had lost by two or three votes. Ladies and gentlemen, so you have a responsibility to ensure that when you go to vote on the 6th of December, you put your X by the saw. The saw for sure. Make sure you got two little lines and you are to put the X in between the line. Make sure no part of your X touches the line above or the line below. This is what we call voting accurately. So if you vote, once you vote wisely and accurately, ladies and gentlemen, you will have done the job. The next thing that you will have to do, which is your responsibility, it is to ensure, ladies and gentlemen, that you police the ballots and, of course, the lines at the polling station. We're going to have the most police that we have ever seen in Dominica because each and every one of us, we will be policemen and police women policing the polls on polling day, ladies and gentlemen. We have a responsibility to ensure that we guard our victory so that we don't see our victory the day of the polling day and the day after we are told something else. So we have to make sure that we are there early, we go to vote early, when we are finished voting, we must stay around, ensure that there is no cuckoo maca going on with our, with our polls. Make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that in the lines, when you, when you guard the lines, make certain that people that you do not know from your community make sure that they are not going to be in the line looking to vote. This is your responsibility. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, people who are voting fraudulently, they are indeed committing an offense, in fact, a criminal offense. And we have a responsibility to ensure that whenever a crime is about to be committed or is being committed, we have a responsibility to step in and ensure that it doesn't, ladies and gentlemen. So we have an awesome responsibility on the day. But leading up to the day, ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to ensure that you volunteer in your constituency to do a number of things. Your constituency, your candidate is going to need agents, many agents, so make sure that you volunteer early so that you can, be, you can receive the proper training that is required so you can do a perfect job on, train, on, on polling day. So ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to volunteer your time on polling day. Make sure you, you let your, your candidate know ahead of time that you are interested in assisting him or her with making certain that we succeed at the polls. So it is not just to go and vote, 
and go back home and wait. You must vote early and then you must remain to do some work and ensure that victory is not taken away from us. So ladies and gentlemen, at this time, with those few words, I want to move to calling my next speaker. As I said, the lineup is going to be reasonably short this evening, but for good reason. And I will remind you again that tomorrow we are going to be in Grand Bay. Grand Bay tomorrow, Tuesday. On Wednesday, we are going to be in the Rosa Valley, ladies and gentlemen. So the Rosa Valley on Wednesday, and then on Thursday, we will continue on, ladies and gentlemen. Friday, we are going to be in, in Castle Bruce with a big meeting with teacher Ernie. That's going to be Friday. On Saturday, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be on the Bayfront where we will be launching the party's manifesto. That is going to be our normal or standard manifesto. But on Thursday, we are going to be in Grand Four, ladies and gentlemen, where we will have a big public meeting and we will be launching the Youth Manifesto. So in other words, ladies and gentlemen, we recognize the significant role that the youths of this country will play in the future development of our country. So we have, for the first time, the UWP, the first party, to be presenting a manifesto that is geared towards the youth of this country, explaining the responsibility that will be placed on the youth of this country as far as national development goes. So as I said on Saturday, we will be on the Bayfront launching the normal or usual manifesto. And then on Sunday the 1st, make sure you remember, Sunday the 1st, we are going to have the gigantic national motorcade. That motorcade is going to leave from Portersville and it's going to make its way along the west coast to Portsmouth, through to Marigot, the Kalinago territory, through Castle Bruce, coming back, ladies and gentlemen, to Roseau, and we are going to end at the, the Newtown Savannah, the Newtown playing field. This is where we will end on Sunday with a big rally in Newtown. So I have given you the schedule. Take note of it, ladies and gentlemen, so you will be a part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I mentioned earlier to you that we're going to be, I invited you to a big meeting in Grand Bay tomorrow. So it is quite appropriate at this time that I, my next speaker comes from Grand Bay, the man who we will be joining tomorrow in large numbers. Because ladies and gentlemen, this man, although he came on the scene relatively recently, I tell you that man is powerful. The man has already got people shaking in the Grand Bay constituency. And I have actually been told by many people from the Grand Bay constituency that this man don't be surprised this man could give all of this country a big surprise with the work that he has been doing on the ground ladies and gentlemen it is with pleasure that i welcome the next pal rep for the Grand Bay constituency brother Nep Pocket ladies and gentlemen thank you good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing tonight? I know we're a little bit rain down, but we're still in high spirits, right? We're still in high spirits, right? I can't hear you. All right, all right, all right. I love that, I love that. And my people, it's always a pleasure to spend some time here with you on the stage. And I want to thank, yes, sir, I want to thank my brother Mike Wallace for this very hearty introduction. And, you know, as everybody know, 
I did come into the scene, come onto the scene very late. And um, I will be giving you guys a prize, a surprise come December 6th or December 7th after they're in. Trust me. A lot of things is happening in Grand Bay. And when I just came on the scene, they said that I was just a name on the ballot. But right now they're going up and down, to and nail, trying to go everywhere I went through after me. But the young people know what time it is. As they've said on Facebook, they will be taking the cool out, but they will be voting him out. And I encourage them to do so because it is our money. They're walking around, driving around, parading our money, thinking they can hold our money over our heads as an ultimatum, just so that we can put an X next to their name. But the people of Dominica have awakened. And like the religious people have said, there's a change. There's a paradigm shift going on, and it's in the air, it's in the ground, and it's everywhere. And all of us, all of us provide energy to that shift, and we should continue to do that. We should continue to spread the love, we should continue to spread the unity, and we should continue to spread the word that we are fighting for our rights, and we are standing our ground, we are standing for principle, and for what is right in Dominica. Are you with me, my people? All right. I just want to touch a bit on youth empowerment because as I mentioned last night at Brother Danny Luger's meeting, the United Workers Party intend to invest in the young people of Dominica very intensely. And you heard Brother Wallace mention that just a moment ago. And one of the things I would like to touch on is the diversification of our business ideas. Uh, we have heard diversification of our banana industry or tourism industry and you know that falls into that lot as well one thing I notice I've noticed um, a lot happening uh, with some of the programs that the current government provides to young people the business units and some of the funds for small business that they have everyone basically falling into the same line so you see a number of small bars you see a number of barber shops, you see a number of salons, and not enough business diversification. I'll give you an idea of that. So instead of, instead of opening or encouraging young persons to open 10 barber shops in the Roseau area, why not have one barber shop and a few other shops providing ancillary services to that one barber shop? Ancillary services are basically complementary business services that you can provide to the barber shop. For example, repairing of their, their tools, uh, providing equipment for them for sale, providing some of the utilities and utensils that they use. And the same can be done in other business areas. For example, you open a bar, uh, that person may want to learn how to provide, how to make certain drinks. You know, instead of everyone doing the same thing, we need to diversify our business ideas and provide linkages in those business ideas. Another part of diversification would also come in sports. There's a huge thing going on right now and it's taken over the world by storm. I mean, while we, are, we, while we in Dominica and the Caribbean are accustomed to some of the traditional forms of sports like basketball, football, uh, cricket, uh, that sort of thing, there's something taking the world by storm, and it's called eSports. Now, eSports alludes to internet, you know, online, the web. And a lot of persons in Dominica, and young people I might add, take part in what we call gaming. Now, some of you who grew up may know, you know, may have a negative idea of what gaming is. Uh, I know as a young boy growing up, I used to enjoy playing video games, but my grandmother always had a problem with me because she felt I wasted too much time playing video games. No matter how much I prioritize my time and my schoolwork to get things done. But right now, you have young persons playing video games, making salaries of tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and up to millions of dollars. I know so many talented young people in Dominica who play video games 
and can play video games at the tournament level. Esports is basically partaking in sporting activities online or through video gaming. And this is a big thing right now. This is a big thing right now. And I feel that we in Dominica are in a position to allow some of our young persons who may not be so apt in the physical sporting areas, but can do something very adequately in the esports sector. And we can take advantage of that. Another area that I believe we can diversify into is to e-commerce. I am an e-commerce businessman. And I've sold a number of the local items that I grew up eating and, 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 and producing with my mom when I was a young man growing up. For example, um, what we call uh, tambourine ball, um, tablet, you know, the coconut, the coconut treat, um, cocoa sticks. I've sold, personally, I've sold over 3,000 to 3,500 cocoa sticks online. And those are cocoa sticks that I purchased locally in Grand Bay from producers in Grand Bay themselves. And yeah, sodas as well. Yeah, all these things. Everything that we can produce, there is a market online. There's something that they call the shared economy. That is where people provide businesses to other people. We have the traditional form of, of business arrangement where, where businesses provide services and products to customers. In the shared economy, customers provide businesses and services to other customers. So I may have a skill or I may have a, a service that I can provide. Instead of opening a business, I provide that service to people online and I deal with people directly instead of through a third party or a third party entity. And this economy is get to, you know, to grow to a $7 billion market by the year 2025-2020. You understand? And we have a lot of skills, a lot of skilled persons right here in Dominica who may be able to provide their talents and their competencies online to people locally in the region and internationally. We should take advantage of that. I've sold straw hats. I've sold um, some of those dolls that we make, that we sell to tourists on the Bayfront. I've sold straw bags and a number of other items that we can produce or that we produce locally and we find it difficult to get markets for it. So with a UWP government, Team Dominica government, we will be looking into all those areas, as we've mentioned before, creating new markets for our people to take advantage of. And e-commerce, e-commerce, my friends, is a very lucrative market. The people online never sleep. While you are asleep, I'm making money. And that's a fact. And I told myself five years ago that I want to get to a point where every day I fall asleep and I get up, I can look at my phone and I can see how much money I've made over the night. And anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. It can be $5, $20 US. That's times two EC. That's the way of bringing in foreign money into our economy. I extract that money from the ATM and I spend that money locally. So there are avenues that we can utilize on our own as individuals as well, outside of government's you know, input into, what's, into what goes on. We ourselves can take the initiatives and do certain things. But I know on our Team WP, on our Team Dominica, UWP government, all of these avenues, all of these avenues will be looked into and so that we can bring more connectivity to our people where business and economic development and progress is concerned. Another area I'd like to basically touch on quickly is, you know, encouraging the private sector in Dominica to provide more corporate social responsibility programs. And just to give you some information, to, there are certain companies uh, overseas 
on the global scale, who operate globally, who provide programs that help to, how can I say, subsidize their own business services. For example, I'm a, I'm a global business who imports and exports agricultural produce all around the world. And instead of just purchasing from big businesses or purchasing from huge farms, what some of these companies do is they establish their supermarkets or their outlets in small developing countries and they provide financial and business assistance to the local farmers or the local people that they can get the input from. Uh, that is one area, that is one area of corporate social responsibility. Another area is how you've seen in, in countries like Jamaica, where the private companies take pride in endorsing their athletes. That is something I believe that we can do right here in Dominica. And I think Team Dominica, UWP, should definitely consider encouraging that kind of activity. It provides a greater form, a greater sense of unity, a greater sense of pride when, you know, the young persons can go overseas and support and promote their talents for Dominica, in the name of Dominica, to come back on the island and they can receive support from the country and the private sector in kind or in financial support. And, you know, this whole hype with regards to what is going on right now with electoral reform and with the elections, it is, it is deeply saddening to me as a young man. And I have to say a big kudos to the leader of Team Dominica, the Honorable Lennox Linton, who continues to be a role model on all levels. And I am just glad that I'm a part of this team and not the other one, because trust me, the things that I'm seeing, all I see is desperation all around the island. And it saddens me that we as a people have to fall to that level. That we as a people have to degrade ourselves to that level, to the point where ignorance is all that reigns. And I know that Dominican people are intelligent people. We are intelligent people, and that's a fact. We live Dominica and travel all around the world, and we excel in numerous fields, in science, uh, engineering, agriculture, sports, and we make it happen. So it's hard for me to understand why we cannot emulate the same thing locally. It is clear that the environment locally is not conducive to our own personal growth. So I'd like to urge each and every Dominican tonight that the first step into developing Dominica and to bring in the kind of economic development and progress that we want is to be intellectually honest with ourselves. And I learned that being a part of Team Dominica. We have to be honest with ourselves first before we can be honest with anybody else. And it is clear that the environment in Dominica is not conducive for our own personal growth, much less for business enterprise and otherwise. So, I will leave you tonight because I've said a mouthful, more than I usually do. <laughs> uh, but I'm very happy that you guys took the time off to listen and listen so attentively. I appreciate that. I hope that some of the things that I've spoken of, you guys will retain. And just to reiterate, I would really like to, I'd really like to see you guys at Grand Bay tomorrow night. A big show of support for all you Negmao. We have some Negmaos out here tonight? Where the Negmaos at? All right, all right. I see you, my friend. I see you, my friend. I love that. We need to maintain that spirit, okay? Dominicans are strong people. Whether you're black, whether you're blue, whether you're red, we are all strong. We just need to reel them in. They're a bit lost right now, so we need to reel them in and show them the love and support and make them understand that they're on the wrong path and they need to fall back in line. This is about Dominica. This is about moving Dominica forward. And once Dominica can move forward, we the people will move forward. And it's about us. It's about us. And we need to do whatever it takes to ensure that our country can survive, to ensure that our country 
can progress in the next coming years. All right? So my people, stand strong. Stand firm. Do not let go of your fighting spirit. Dominica needs you now more than ever. All right? And keep in mind that the people of Grand Bay are voting straight with NEP and they're not looking behind. So in a big round of applause, I'd like you guys to say, Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go, Pharaoh. It's about time. Let my people go. Your antics will no longer give you the strength that you need. Everything that you do, the Almighty Father is bringing it into clear view so the people can see it. Your time is up. Pharaoh, let my people go. My people, thank you. And good night. Hey, Minister, boy, we talk to the nation now. Listen carefully. Let's go. 15 years in country under a spell. Yeah, man. Open up your hands and listen here well. Now the youth are fed up and we know that they're ready for change. The Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe, so the color is blue. And Tim Dominica, they will take us through. To corruption and lies incompetence, we say no. Thank you very much, Mr. DJ. Ladies and gentlemen, you see why they refer to him as the Negmawa? That man is a man who understands commerce. He's a man that understands development from a grassroots standpoint. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, you notice that he focuses so much on what we produce. But the big thing about it is, he doesn't only focus on what we produce to be consumed locally, he focuses on what we produce to be sold internationally, ladies and gentlemen. So when you see people moving around, the man is showing you that if you have the right entrepreneurial spirit, you can in fact make a good living. You just have to be creative with your skills. Ladies and gentlemen, Put your hands together and let's say a big thank you to Brother Nep Packett, the next man, the next man for the Grand Bay constituency. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me just uh, use this opportunity to ask JJ to come backstage, please. Jefferson James, uh, you would please come backstage. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring Back to the platform, to the microphone, a man who was here earlier on. I told you that he hails from the Grand Fork constituency. What I did not tell you is that, ladies and gentlemen, he was very much a part of the United Workers' Party's platform from 1988 when we got started. He stood very strongly behind the late Mrs. Gertrude Roberts. May her soul rest in peace. He was very instrumental. I think I remember him as being her constituency association chairman at some point, And he held other positions. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a man who understands the Grand Fork constituency. And so tonight... He has agreed to say a few words, bring in some solidarity here this evening from the Grand Four constituency. I ask us to welcome once again, Brother Augustus Lewis. We have never had it so bad. They have never had it so good. Just see how they live pretty while some begging money to buy food. Just for food. Thank you, Mr. DJ. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you greetings from the constituency of Monjon, which comprises Tefem, Rosalie, Granfor, Rivia Sirik, and Monjon. I bring you greetings from the next parliamentary representative, Dr. Ferro Coffey, ladies and gentlemen. And I can tell you, come the 6th of December, the first 
One in the back for United Workers Party will be the Monjon constituency, ladies and gentlemen. They work out their strategy thinking that Greta going up will get the votes of my robots, but they made a big mistake, ladies and gentlemen. A very big mistake. And we are telling them, we are sending a clear message to them that what happened in previous elections in that constituency is not going to happen again, ladies and gentlemen. They are not going to steal our votes anymore, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready. And come the sixth, we'll have a new parliamentary representative in the name of Dr. Ferro Coffey, ladies and gentlemen. Whether they like it or not, but that's what it is. And I'm asking you, in your constituencies, that you do the same and let us have a United Workers' Party government come the 7th of December, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the United, the Labour Party has failed Dominica, ladies and gentlemen. They have failed Dominica in all aspects, and that's why this election, we must vote them out. Those of you who are from the communities, you know what? You know the importance that village councils have played in the development of those communities. But today, alas, the local government that we, can, we used to boast of we can no longer say we have the best system in the Caribbean. I was a local government practitioner, so I know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Too much interference, ladies and gentlemen, in the local government system. And the United Workers' Party government is going to change that, ladies and gentlemen. A United Workers' Party government is going to put back the, the development of the community in the hands of the people of the community. They know it best, ladies and gentlemen. Not a minister, not a prime minister. And we want our people to go back to work. We don't want a prime minister, every time he comes to Grand Four or in the constituency, he will put a $200 in a shop and tell the young men, go and drink. No. We can do better than that, ladies and gentlemen. We deserve better than that. And we're going to teach him a lesson, and he will know... He will forget Grandfather and will forget the $200 he, will, he was putting in the shops, ladies and gentlemen. We are telling him, we are sending a clear message that the illegal voters that they're trying to put in the constituency, they will not work with, we will not work with them, ladies and gentlemen. We have identified them and we will get them out. They will not cast a vote in this election, ladies and gentlemen, in that constituency. And I'm asking you, all the constituencies, look out for that because they have some names, strange names, on those um, registered voters. Look at, make sure you know who are your people. And as the chairman said earlier, once you see somebody in the line that should not be in the line, get the person out of the line. You know, ladies and, and even, I'll give you a scenario, it was 2000 and... 14, that the Prime Minister came up in Grand Four and he tried to go in the, around the polling station. And I, I personally call the police and tell the police, make this man get out of there because he's not from the, and even if he's from the constituency, he has no right to be in that, in, at that, in that position at that time. And from that time, he he has never checked me as someone that he can talk to. He will talk to everybody about development, but he knows what I have confronted him because he was doing wrong. And we, the people of Dominica, must confront him now and tell him, that's it. Get out. Let Dominica move on. Because if he is here still, Dominica will never move on, ladies and gentlemen. Dominica is calling on us. This election is not about workers, about labor. This, discussion, this election is about the further development of Dominica. And we can only develop Dominica further with Team Dominica, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I'm asking, when you go to your constituency, don't, don't be laid back. I know the, the um, polls saying that we have already won the election, but we have not. We should not be complacent, ladies and gentlemen. Work as though you are still at the back, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want no stone uncovered, ladies and gentlemen. We want to do everything, and then we want to win 
and 11 is 11 will make us government. We know we must get 11 seats. But if we can get a landslide victory, let us go for a landslide victory, ladies and gentlemen. And let us show Skerritt, he don't rule things. The people of Dominica rule things, ladies and gentlemen. And come the 6th of December, I want you to put your vote by the saw. Ladies and gentlemen, it's crucial. And those of you who are in my age or older than me, you are not doing it for yourself. You are doing it for your children. The future of Dominica is in the hands of the children, ladies and gentlemen. Let us do it that they, when they come, they will not say, my father or my mother or my brother did not do what they had to do in their time. Let us do it for them, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, United Workers' Party, Team Dominica, and the only leader, the only leader now is Honorable Lennox Linton. It's, it's a problem. They must be thinking of why they ask Lennox to come in the ring. Now that he is in the ring, they have to deal with him because they have to deal with the might of Lennox Linton. And come the 7th of December, the next Prime Minister of Dominica will be no other than Lena Honorable Lennox Linton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. They have never had it so good. They will set out before hospitals that serves the multitude. So we fed up and their chances done and we decide when elections come, tell them get out, get out. We don't want them no more. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Brother Augustus Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. I told you he's been around for a long time, and I'm sure you will agree with me. Ladies and gentlemen, Portsmouth, Portsmouth, Portsmouth. The next parliamentary representative, ladies and gentlemen, for the Portsmouth constituency is a man who is by profession a civil engineer. The people of Portsmouth had an opportunity five years ago when Jefferson James presented himself to them. They did not, or he did not succeed at the time but it would seem as if all the things that he said to them or he predicted would have happened to the economy of Portsmouth because he could have seen things were going wrong. It seemed as if everything he predicted has come to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, as a result, this time around, you go to Portsmouth and you will hear many people telling you, JJ, JJ for Portsmouth. JJ for Portsmouth. Ladies and gentlemen, so much so that a man, the incumbent representative who has been accustomed to just leaving the constituency, not hold any public meetings or anything, ladies and gentlemen, JJ has him doing work in the constituency for the first time in probably the last three or four election cycles. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with pleasure that I ask you to welcome Jefferson James, JJ, to the podium tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have never had it so bad. They have never had it so good. Just see how they live pretty while some begging money to buy food. Yes, yes, yes. I bring you greetings from the north. My people of Portsmouth, good evening. My brother Mike said it right, my people. In Portsmouth, we have them trembling. We have them trembling because the youth of Portsmouth has realized that the Labour Party is not interested in their well-being. Because after Maria, it is sad that the present administration has taken the disaster that affected us as an opportunity to forsake us once again. Not only in Portsmouth, but in every other constituency. I'm certain that you can attest to that. That the assistance that was brought to us was used 
as a political tool by the Labour Party. A lot of us suffered victimization. That is what the young people of Portsmouth suffered. The building material was not distributed fairly. We call it ration. But the assistance was not distributed fairly. And that is why the young people of Portsmouth are standing up today. My brothers and sisters, it is sad. Sad when we look at what is happening. We have some young contractors in Portsmouth that were employed to erect the street lights. Just look at it. Simple things as street light. A local contractor employed to do that. He would employ an excavator. The operator of that excavator or the owner would have gotten paid. Then he would bring in two men to square up that hole. That is two other locals that were being paid. A steel man would come in, tie the steel and drop it in that hole. That is another set of locals being paid. Then they would come back with a dump truck, the stone and sand cement on board with a two-back mixer, and a group of them would cast the, the base for the street lights. That is another group of locals that were being paid. Then we would have another local coming in with a truck with that basket and erect the street light. You see the number of locals that were being paid from that very simple project? Today, the Labour Party has seen it fit to take that project from our simple local contractors and give it to the Chinese. And what the Chinese did will line up the streets of Portsmouth with one Haitian per hole. So we had one Haitian digging a hole. Then they would come back with a team of seven guys, cast that hole, erect a tripod, and mount up that street light. My brother and sister, that is the reality, not only in Portsmouth, but in Dominica in general. Where this government has seen it fit to remove bread from our mouth and give it to foreigners. We've been hearing of all contracts, major contracts on island, being given out to foreign contractors. We are all aware of it. But when the Labour Party has seen it fit to remove bread from the simple contractors, we ought to ask ourselves a question. And that is why the people of Portsmouth are standing up. We know the problem we have in housing. Nothing that this Labour Party has done, they are doing it out of the goodness of their heart. It is all about gaining political points. We cannot continue to allow ourselves to be used by that regime. Our livelihood cannot be detected by the Labour Party and what they do just to gain political points. So I'm calling out to all my friends, my colleagues. I know there are a lot of bright minds out there. Those of us who went out to study and come back here to build the country. And we have been placed on the side by this administration. I'm sending out that challenge to each and every one of you tonight. Search your conscience. Search your conscience. This Labour Party is bent on destroying the human resource. The time is now. We must stand up as a people. Stand up our pe as a people and de defend our democracy. Let us defend what is dear to us. The time is now. So I will urge you, each and every one of you out there tonight, stand up as the people of Portsmouth are standing up and let your constituency be counted for the United Workers' Party in the upcoming general election. Let your constituency be counted as one that will fight for our democracy. Let your constituency be counted as one that will look out for the interests of our children, the future of this land. We have that responsibility. Let us not fail. Let us not fail for our children. Let us not fail for the future of Dominica. My brothers and sisters, this is serious times. Serious time. And the only opportunity we have 
is to bring in the United Workers' Party, Team Dominica, under the leadership of Honorable Lennox Linton and that formidable team to move Dominica forward so that each and every one of us can benefit, each and every one of us can grow up as a people and enjoy life right here in Dominica. My brothers and sisters, the time is now. The time is now. Let us rise as a people. Let us rise. Search yourself. Search your conscience. I thank you. They have never had it so good. They will set us before hospitals that serves the multitude. So we fed up and their chances done and we decide. When elections come, tell them get out, get out, get out. That decision is very clear. We don't want them no more. The man is so right because they have kept Dominica down for too long. Brothers and sisters, you heard JJ and he told you, you got to search your conscience. Search your conscience on the 6th, ladies and gentlemen, and do the right thing, not only for yourself, in a lot of instances, but it is for your children and your grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rosa Central constituency, there is a gentleman who has been very much a part of the development of the constituency association, the United Workers Party constituency association here in this constituency. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, he has been the man at the helm of that constituency association. A little while ago, he made a turn, but ladies and gentlemen, as a true patriot, once the elections were declared, he told himself that he had to be here because he has been instrumental in ensuring that Soso is the man for Roso. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to welcome a very dynamic speaker, very knowledgeable gentleman. Welcome, Brother Errol Emmanuel, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I bring you warm greeting and welcome you, welcome you to Rosa Central, the seat that the UWP have defended in the past elections. And we are fortified and renewed and energized. And we are redoubling our effort to ensure that with a pal rep and a deputy pal rep, they will be defeated in Rosa Central. I stand because I support Glenroy Coffey as our candidate. Glenroy Coffey is not a just come candidate. He's not a man who has just been pulled from a hanger and thrust into the fray of politics. When we began the crusade of politics in, in Roseau in 1990, Glenroy Coffey was one of the foot soldiers of Honorable Norris Privro, an exemplary candidate who fought and fought until he brought home the seat to the United Workers' Party. And so Glenroy Coffey has been involved from the beginning. He has been involved in our Roseau Improvement Committee when we brought lights in Virgin Lane and when we paved the tracks in Virgin Lane, Glenroy Coffey was a part of that. When we organized the youth in Roseau Central to learn steel band and give them a skill, Glenroy Coffey was a part of that. 
Brothers and sisters, when we were organizing on an annual basis our Mother's Day to ensure that we recognize and celebrate the mothers of Roto Central, Glenroy Coffee was a part of that. Glenroy Coffee is part of us. He is one of us. And so we support him because we know where he came from. We are familiar with his struggles. Glenroy Coffee was not born with a golden spoon in his mouth. He was born of humble beginnings and was raised on River Street like I was. Glenroy Coffey, when he sat his common entrance, he did not get a space at a secondary school, but he continued to fight until he was accepted at the St. Mary's Academy. Glenroy Coffey did not give up he graduated and he became an excellent mathematician at the SMA, helping students when they had difficulties with the subject. Then Roy Coffey then went on to work and he had a distinguished career as an extension officer. But because of his dedication, his commitment and his efficiency in his job, he did not stay where he started. He was involved in what they call upward mobility and he got positions where he was in charge of the extension team. He left being the man in charge of the least spot control in the industry. That is the man we are offering to you. And Glenroy Coffey got involved in providing transportation services for one of our ma major companies in Dominica. And on his own, on his own, Mr. Glenroy Coffey then entered a course in UWE where he graduated successfully with a degree. That is the man that we are sending to represent our people in Roseau. A man that has been tried and proven. A man who has made his way to get educated and he is at the point where he is prepared to serve his people. Serving the people of Roseau Central is not a beauty competition, brothers and sisters. It is about commitment. It is about hard work. It is about being genuine and sympathetic with the cause of the people in Roseau. One of the causes we have been fighting in Roseau Central is the fact that the Windsor Park is no longer available to our youths to play. Very quickly, let me take you down memory lane and mention the number of football teams that originated from Roseau Central. And today we can only speak of Kensbro because all of the teams have disappeared because this government has no interest in young people of Roseau Central and they have locked us out of our stadium, brothers and sisters. There were teams like Combermere, Spartans, Blackburns, Celtics, Kensbro, Blue Stars, Tokers, DGS, SMA, Graham Academites, Chocolate City, Bath Estate, Green City, Dem Central, and the list goes on, brothers and sisters. Today we can hardly speak of a football team in Roseau Central. That is the record and the legacy of a disrespectful, oppressive DLP government in Roseau Central. And today they want us to vote for them. They criticize the youth, that the youth are lazy. Today, there are so many opportunity, opportunities available in sports for young people. And if we give them that avenue where they can excel and also learn to be team players, respect the rule of the game, we would have better citizens. But they have neglected us and they have rejected us in Roseau Central. And so, because they have neglected us, and because they have rejected us, come the next election, brothers and sisters, we shall neglect them, and we shall reject them at the polls, because all of us, including the Labourites, the Freedomites, and the UWPites, will be voting for so-so in Roseau. They want to concede, they want to concede, they are saying, I don't know why I go in that. All where I go 
Even those who are labor rights, they're telling me that so-so is a nice fella. They say, yes, I, I, I support labor, but I must tell you, so-so is a very helpful fella. When they go in the homes of the labor rights, they will say, I cannot say nothing bad about Sosu. Because after the hurricane, when I wanted to carry my materials, it was Sosu I saw. And Sosu carried my materials. And when I asked him how much, he said, no man, that is for nothing. And he was doing that long before he knew that he was going to be the candidate. So he was not doing it out of politics. He was doing it out of genuine love and care. And these are the type of people we need to represent us in government. Not people who are selfish, not people who no longer want to listen to the people, the citizenry who put them in office to be their servants. They now think that they are our masters. And so when we stand up for electoral reform, when we stand in the gap between democracy and dictatorship, they say that we are rubble risers and we are troublemakers. But they also called Martin Luther King a troublemaker. They also call Rodney King of Guyana a troublemaker. Yes, they called Bob Marley, who was singing songs of liberation in Jamaica, a rubble riser and a troublemaker. And so we are in good company when those who are oppressive wants to take away our rights of association, our freedom of expression. And when they decide to violate the laws, which are the supreme constitution that governs the land. When we stand to protect it, they can call us whatever names they want, but we know we are standing on the side of truth and righteousness. And so as I close, as I close, the Rosa we have is a 20-year legacy of a Labour Party that have neglected Rosa Central. And overnight, because elections are in the air, they are promising the people of Roseau after 20 years all types of apartments. But Dio, who pass a fair apartment, see who pan it here, pay the people for their land before you start talking about apartments. The number of people that you promise that you're going to purchase their land, pay the people for their land before you talk about building apartments. I and Mr. Coffey a day, we were driving up to Buffalo State, and they say that tourism is everybody's business. And because of the poor sidewalks and drainage in front of Dominica Grammar School, four white tourists was walking, and one actually fought, fell and twisted his ankle. He got some bruises, and I said, that is the Rosso they want to invite people, a place they said, that would be the envy of the Caribbean. Well, if Roseau is the envy of the Caribbean, I don't want to see how the Caribbean looks. And so we have a broken down city. We have a city that the drainage is clogged when it rains. We have a city where the sidewalks are uneven and causing damage to pedestrians and visitors of Roseau. And so no longer are we going to allow them to neglect us in Roseau. Because this time around, we are voting a United Workers' Party government. And they understand that Roseau is the capital, the seat of power. And so our capital, the seat of power, must be welcoming and pleasing. We will include in ensuring that we have solar lights. We will be efficient in our lighting of Roseau. And so, brothers and sisters, this time around, we are going to have a resounding victory. They can put dead people on this voter's list. They can try to marginate all types of schemes. But this time around, our eyes are open. And we will be vigilant. We will ensure that the Cocoa Macac of dead people voting will no longer take place this time around. And let me send a warning. To those who are violating the laws, under the electoral laws, there's an act, and it is described as uh, uh, the, the Electors Act. It is speaking about impersonation. Impersonation is when you come and represent somebody that you are not. And 
The penalty for that impersonation is $5,000 and or two years imprisonment. Let me warn them, following this general election when we win, we shall prefer charges against those who have violated the electoral laws in Dominica. And let the chips fall where they may. Let the chips fall where they may. Who go to jail for breaking the law and are being fined? That is your business. But you are for one tonight. Do not violate our laws. And so in Rosa, we are going to vote so so. And around the country, we are going to vote the United Workers Party. And then this Christmas, we will be smiling and shining because we will be having a beautiful Christmas, brothers and sisters. Thank you and good night. Mr. DJ, hold that right there for the next one, okay? Let's, we will, the next one, hold that right there. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you that speaker was a dynamic speaker, and if you agree, let's put our hands together for Brother er Errol Emmanuel. You, you kind of wonder, is he the candidate or is it so-so? But it's better, they are better together. So ladies and gentlemen, this is why so so is going to be the man let me remind you tomorrow night tomorrow evening we're going to grand bay grand bay is the place with brother nep magua neg mawa boy what a tongue twister nep neg mawa pocket i got it this time ladies and gentlemen at this point we are moving on with the program it is with great pleasure that I invite the next speaker. The next speaker holds the very important position, ladies and gentlemen, of President of the United Workers' Party. It's an enormous job, ladies and gentlemen, because he has the responsibility of ensuring that everything goes right in this party. And as you look around and you see how this party has progressed, I am sure you will agree with me that he has done a wonderful job as president of the United Workers' Party. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to join me in welcoming the man, Mr. In fact, Senator Isaac Baptist, president of the United Workers' Party. Wait on clinic for appointment. I would die of too fake on the government. Why keep a problem? I can do without. Take them out, take them out, take them out. Thank you, thank you, Boswe Tutmon. Good night, everybody. Lately, you saw me as one of the persons chairing the meeting. Tonight, I decided I'm going to speak to you about some of the issues affecting us and why we and all of us concerned about the future of Dominica must and should vote the United Workers Party into office and Lennox Linton as your prime minister, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the last two polls that we heard of, one by the company of Alex Bruno and the other by Peter Wakeham's company, told us that there is a large percentage of persons who are undecided in every constituency, the 21 constituencies. And you must be asking yourself, who are those persons? And why should they be undecided, meaning that they have not made up their mind 
which of the parties they are going to vote for or whether they'll be voting at all this coming elections. I am going to speculate and suggest that the undecided voters are those Freedom Party supporters of Freedomites who migrated to the Dominica Labour Party when Mary Junior Charles tell them to vote Labour. I'm also going to assume that some of those undecided are disgruntled Labour Party supporters who see their friends and their other supporters getting and they're not getting. In other words, they see their Labour Party friend, they're getting cool out and they on this side not getting no cool out. And I also believe there is another segment of this undecided, a young people who are educated, who wants a better future for themselves and they cannot see themselves associating with the type of politics that is in Dominica and therefore they might be deciding I am not going to vote or I don't know who I'm, not go I'm going to vote for. And the last group I suspect are those persons who are not freedomite. They are not labor right. They are not United Workers Party supporters. They are independent and they are looking for a message. They are looking for a message as to where they want this country to go to make up their minds where they are voting. I'm saying therefore to the freedomites who are now looking for a hope to go, ask yourself why it is that you stayed with the Labour Party for three elections, 2000, 2004, 05, 9, and also 2014, and now you are undecided. You are undecided because I'm suggesting to you, you have seen that the incompetence of this Labour Party administration and their corrupt practices, you can no longer associate with it. And therefore, you are telling yourself, your subconsciousness is selling to you, man, you from what Mary Virginia Charles used to be, the standard that she used to endorse and uphold, why can I, should I be continue to be in that? And this is why you should not remain undecided. If only for your children, if only for the sake of Dominica, if only for the peaceful rest of Mary Virginia Charles, I'm suggesting to you, you should decide that you are going to vote the United Workers Party because when Labour said that there was corruption in the United Workers Party, you knew that it was not true. It has proven to you it is not true. And the corruption that is now taking place in the Dominican Labour Party is pale to whatever else is happening in the Caribbean. So I'd like to support and encourage you, the Freedomites, who are looking and appearing to be undecided, you are decided. Listen to your subconsciousness. Listen to your patriotism. Listen to the spirit of Mary Eugenia Charles and decide, I will come back home. I'm coming back home, not to United Workers Party, but to Dominica. I'm coming back home to save my country. And the only way I can do it now is to vote for the United Workers Party, ladies and gentlemen. And those of you labor rights who are now deciding and see what is happening in that you have your party, your government is not sharing the goods of the country equally. Imagine and ask yourself, Sayoka Fair United Workers Party supporters. That's why you should ask yourself and say, if they can do me a labor right and see and they do not give me simply because they feel that they have my vote already. So, Mame Lever, yo. It is, that's how they treat Grand Bay. That's how they, say they treat the Sufria constituency. That's how they treat all the constituencies that they feel that is their Jade Patat. And that is how they fit, see, treat you. They believe that they have you in their hands. They can do what they want with you. This is a, not a fair government. A government is there to take care of all the people. We have to face reality and say yes. Now and then you will give more to those that openly support you. 
But Papa Bordier, when you have a government deciding you will live, you shall not live, it is not a good government. And you, the labor rights, who now face the reality of your party, your government, not giving you your fair share, realize what we and the United Workers Party are facing and their children. And your conscience to tell you, humanly, Christianity, I should not be supporting that party. And it is time for change. It is time for me to be not undecided. It is time for me to decide on my Christian principle. I will not vote them anymore, at least. And the only option I have for this country is to vote for the United Workers Party. And you, the young people, you, the young people, many of you would be in your 20s. It would be that when this administration came into office, you were a toddler. You did not understand the issues. And you saw yourself growing up, your parents struggling to send you to school, send you to high school and college. And I'm certain if you speak to your parents, they will tell you things were better for me when my parents were take bringing me up. Because I did not have to depend on a politician to give me nothing. I was in a society where everybody was looking after everybody because we were together. But this government has made enemies of the people. They are now controlling them and they have reached the point where they are disrespecting the people. So you, the young people, must understand where we are today in Dominica, it is not because of United Workers Party. It is not because of Lennox Linton. It is not because of the businessmen of Dominica. It is not because of the contractors of Dominica. It is because you have an incompetent government managing the affairs of this country for almost 20 years and they brought the country to nothing. Agriculture did not die because farmers are lazy. Agriculture died in the rural areas because Roosevelt's carrot administration understood that the only way that people in the rural areas made money was through agriculture. So he took the advice of Chavez and others, make sure you take away their income, they become dependent on you so that you control them, ladies and gentlemen. And the United Workers Party will bring back agriculture. The United Workers Party will grow the rural economy so that you, your grandmothers who are there, your uncles and your nephews will continue to make money. When you heard the statement or the phrase, money was meeting money, in your pocket on the time of the United Workers Party, it was true. It was because when you got your salary, that Thursday, Hoxtas was passing in the village. All sorts of things were happening, so your money goes to the bank. The money you're getting from the Hoxtas is in your pocket. You always had money in your pocket. I can tell you, I'm a consultant. I have land in Castle Bruce. I was making money as a consultant, but I was able to get people to work the land that I own so that I could make money out of agriculture. So money was making money in my pocket and many people. And you must understand the reason why we are here today. The reason why Dominica is in that state because we have a government that is only interested in themselves and keeping a few people well and some businessmen and a few people, they invaded the church, they invaded the judiciary, they invaded every institution of state, and they have mashed up the country. They have mashed up the institutions of state. So therefore, we must understand they are no longer playing the role of a government. They are playing the role of a mafia group. And you must take them out. You must take them out. And you, the young people, you must see it from that point of view. Finally, the people of those, the independent people, independent of mine, many of you are intellectuals, many of you are graduates of university, and you are looking for a message to grab you. Have you been listening to the message of United Workers Party? The plans and programs we have been articulating for the past two and three elections, more particularly the last in 2014? Have you taken time to examine the manifesto of the United Workers Party of 2014 that is available and is available in hard copies. Formulated with a team including Dr. Fontaine, 
Dr. Fountain is now in Africa building a new nation because the world recognizes his capacity and ability. How can you not recognize his capacity to help develop a plan for Dominica? The United Workers Party Manifesto is a plan help formulated with Dr. Fountain and others. Joseph Isaac, I feel, I feel sorry for the man, he's my friend. Things got hard with him, he had to go. Have mercy on him, O oh Lord. But I am saying, yes, he's, he's smart. Joseph Isaac is smart. And he was mixing with smart people, Lennox Linton and all the others. And we developed a plan. And everything that's in manifesto of the United Workers Party 2014 is applicable today. It's applicable today. The sectors of the economy said would develop. They are all dead. And we said so. So you, the undecided, you, the people who are independent, I encourage you to get a copy. If you don't have one, come to me, I'll give you one. And look at the manifesto of the United Workers Party 2014. And the new one will be launched on Saturday on the Bayfront. And look at the strategy, the vision, and the proposals in that document. And tell me, with support, where or not this country is going to move up on the United Workers Party, ladies and gentlemen. So you only decided. I expect that percentage will drop by at least 20 to 30 percent by election day because you have understood that yes dominica is for us yes we can change and the reason why we are where we are today is because you have a corrupt incompetent wicked and vindictive government that you must take out from your shoulders ladies and gentlemen we are in the city of roseau i am by trading a development planner architect and property valuer I headed the planning department. I was a consultant on many projects here in Dominica for all international organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, when this administration came into office, they made detailed plans for the renewal, uplifting of Roseau, the sidewalks, the drainage system, the parking system, the traffic control system, everything they met in a document called Roseau Road Green Statement Project. It was a document prepared with Canadian consultants and local consultants, and the Kuwaiti Fund was prepared to finance it. This stupid Pamele government did not do it. When they realized the Kuwaitis were not, that turned their back, they went back to the Kuwaitis. And that is why you see that little section of road around the stadium was financed. And not even a bridge. Not even a bridge they could build properly. That bridge next to the Windsor Park. In any other country, the government would be sued by the property owners of Roseau because they caused, that caused only damage in the city of Roseau during Maria. Because the bridge was is so low on the riverbed. Look at Bath Estate. The United Workers Party built the Bath Estate Bridge. Was there any problem with Bath Estate Bridge? No, this bridge. This I'm saying to you. When we have the financing, we will blast up the damn bridge and put a new bridge over it. We'll blast it up. Otherwise, Roseau will have no peace in the time of climate change and flooding. Roseau, the people of Roseau will always be the problem because of the stupid bridge that they built there, ladies and gentlemen. So we shall, we shall implement the Roseau Road Green Statement Project to make Roseau good. A gentleman that traveled all over the place to lay of that day, Roosevelt's charity out of state. You can see what's happening in the cities of or elsewhere he goes. The only government that has had three ministers of urban renewal, and yet Roseau, I didn't want to say it's thinking. My office is right on Kennedy Avenue, galvanized cover in the drain. I mean, it's, it is sad for you to have a government that could raise money to build a palace for a president, one man costing $33 million, and they lack the capacity to build and find financing to upgrade the city of Roseau, ladies and gentlemen. That's why you don't see tourists walking around Roseau again. If you're a tourist, and you come to a city like this, would you leave? Or when your friend tell you, I walk the city, you know, don't go there. That's what the tourists are telling the other, don't go there. A simple thing like a sidewalk between Portersville and the Deepwater Harbor, these guys cannot build. So these tourists, and the pedestrians can walk comfortably. How can you support a government like this? 
United Workers Party will take care of these problems. And we say to you, we shall modernize Roseau, the historic section of Roseau. That is, from the old market to the new market, all street back to them, Eugenia Charles Boulevard, we shall declare there a duty-free zone, just like you have on Front Street in St. Martin, so we can, we can give assistance to the property owners, upgrade them, bring back their historic character, and have two different shops here, ladies and gentlemen, and modernize the city of Rousseau. That is what the United Workers Party will do for you. Look at the, the riverfront. Look at what they are doing on the river, river bank right there. How can you, in today's day, you have landscape architects, you have urban designers, you put in engineers to do what the nonsense they do there. It's like they're building a street and they put houses along the street. No character, no taste, no vision. Roseau should be facing Roseau River. And you upgrade Roseau River, you landscape it and make it a beautiful feature of the city. That is what United Workers Party will do, ladies and gentlemen. We understand development. We understand what is necessary to be done. And we shall do those things. And there are many things I could talk to you about. But this meeting was never meant to be a long meeting. That is why you saw what we have. It was meant after we walked from Pottersville, we would have a one-hour meeting and close it up, ladies and gentlemen. So that is why you see it is like today. But we could not tell those of you who came to go home. So we kept the meeting. So we do not have many speakers. From there, so so will address you and, of course, a political leader. But there, is, there are many things I and others can talk about. The city of Russell housing. Housing, 20 years, none of the areas of dilap dilapidated housing in the city, pockets, River Street, Virgin Lane, right there. I mean, how can you be prime minister? And you're there for 20 years, and you're looking down on people, and their housing condition like that, and you, you cannot improve it. And there are detailed plans for that. In fact, the reason why Stock Farm was reserved was to ensure that when we come to develop the housing areas in Rosa, we could temporarily relocate the people at Stock Farm. And then when it's done, they could come back. They take Stock Farm and do that nonsense with it and turn Stock for what it is. And right now, a prime piece of land, a prime piece of land in the city, Public Works Department, I have no problem. Public Works have to be reinstated and move out of the city. But the lands of Public Works, who are family, you sell it to your friends, and there's so much demand for land for government projects in the city, we shall take it back. We shall repossess those land and we shall pay. If they pay them too much money, a proper value will say, this is what the land worth. And we'll recompensate them based on the value of the land and not based on what Labour Party paid them, paid them because, or they pay Labour Party in the expectation that when we take it back, they can say that they paid that for it. So we're on top. We are on top. So-so is well-educated. So-so is a community man. So, so is with you in this country and in your city. And whether Melissa gravitates inwards or outward, she can win. Whether she has a sniper or piper, she can win. So, so will be a parliamentary representative. And Lennox Linton has a formidable team. And with his honesty, his capability, his management skill, his trustworthiness, you shall have the best government you shall ever see in Dominica, ladies and gentlemen. Good night and good night. <laughs> Take out the teeth, take out the teeth, take out the teeth and them. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard our president. Let's show some love. Put your hands together. Make some noise for our president. That's what we talk about. We got capable people in the United Workers Party. Capable professionals. And this is why Dominica is going to experience a huge change. Ladies and gentlemen, just before I call Soso for Roso, we have the miracle man who is going to say a few words, bringing some greetings and solidarity from the Sufria constituency. Let's welcome the miracle man, Dr. Sam Christian. <laughs> Patriots, 
Yes, that's you. I'm saying patriots tonight because I am including the freedomites and you know, the freedomites have come over to the workers' side. And this is so good and this is so wonderful. And it includes the labor rights. I don't want, I don't want to call any names. But in the Sufre constituency, hardcore labor rights are turning blue like crazy. <laughs> and, and that's good. That's good. It has been building for a while. A lot of frustration. A lot of demoralization. And people are not energized to vote in the Skerritt Labour Party. So what is happening is just a natural thing. I'm going to be very brief. I just want to say a couple of things. And first of all, I bring you greetings from the Sufria constituency, from Scott's Head, from Galleon, from Sufria, and from Point Michel. And I'm seeing Sufria constituency is very well represented here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in such interesting times. This is by far the most interesting election, the most dramatic election in my memory. I don't know about yours. And what you have heard is that the more that the pressure is building up on Scarit, the more that the noose is tightening around their necks, the more that we see others coming up to try to prop him up. When we saw the 150 people in black suits walking around Maho and walking around Pokase at midnight, I heard, I wasn't there, I didn't hear it. When we hear all of all the different occult and obia and all that kind of stuff that is going on, you can see they are digging down the dredges of the pit of hell to get help from anyhow. When we were in Antigua, they told me that even the ID cards is not foolproof. That what Gaston Brown was doing was paying poor people who was for the opposition. He would pay them $500, $1,000 to hold on to their ID cards until after election. And it's just like what's happening in Dominica, people getting cool outs. But we talk about ID cards and we talk about the cleansing of the voters list. And the fact about it, ladies and gentlemen, is that throughout life, in every generation, People have to fight for their freedom. That is what Thomas Jefferson said at the end of the American Revolution. That the branches, the tree of liberty is watered by the blood of patriots in every generation. So just because you think you correct a child once doesn't mean that you have to correct, you won't have to correct them again. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is our time. This is a battle that the patriots of Dominica, the people who really love Dominica, have to fight. And that is why, think about it logically, you have a joint commission consisting of CARICOM, consisting of the Commonwealth, and consisting of OAS. And three of them together make recommendations that you have to refresh and clean up the voters list and you have to have ID cards. That is not done. The Commonwealth says nothing. Why? Who is the Commonwealth Secretary? None other than Baroness Scotland. We know Baroness Scotland has already come and told us that we have to sue sell, right? Carry come. You have people like Gaston Brown. You have people like Ralph Gonzalez. I saw him in his red shirt saying that Skerritt has done nothing wrong and that we have to go off with the election. You have the St. Lucian diplomat saying, basically saying, you know, the election has to go on and nothing is wrong. But you, your own people, just said that you must. There's no comment about that. So we are left with only the OAS. 
only the OAS, not the Commonwealth, not our brothers in the CARICOM, is going to stand up for us, ladies and gentlemen. This is a fight that we have to win ourselves. And I can tell you that if I had a loved one overseas who was planning to come to Dominica illegally to vote, I would strongly advise them, out of love, do not do it. Do not violate the law. Do not accept a bribe. A bribe in the sense of a free ticket to come to Dominica to undermine a free and fair election. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm, I'm warning you. Don't do it. Please, by the grace of God, don't do it. That is what I would tell my loved one. Personally, I don't know about you. It is up to you. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want to send this out here and say to you that it is wonderful to see the patriots here braving the weather to be here. We have a marathon. We have days and days and days to go. And the blue wave is growing. I am so happy. I was in Sufre on Sunday. I went to church and I went around the neighborhood. This is a place where they burst my head. And yet not one person, not one hostile or negative remark. And I said, wow. It's not because of anything that I did, but because of the whole momentum that is taking place in this country. And what I am hearing out in Point Michel is the same thing that JJ was talking about in Portsmouth. And all over this land, people are coming to their senses. You hear about O.J. Serafin. You hear about that Al Jazeera report. Ladies and gentlemen, stand strong. God is on our side. Work us! And with this, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the next parliamentary representative of the Roseau Central constituency, Soso -so for Roseau, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, a pleasant good evening to the patriots of Dominica, to the people of Rosa Central, my constituents. Rosa Central will be retained. I am telling you, River Street is ready. River Bank is ready. Hillsborough Street is ready. Kennedy Avenue, Cork Street, Fields Lane, Virgin Lane, High Street, Bath Road, Great Judge Street, Great Marlboro Street, all of the streets, Hanover Street, and I can tell you, we are going to do it big time in Rosa Central. Big time in Rosa Central. Brothers and sisters, some time ago, I told you, and I reminded you as well, that when one ship sinks, it doesn't prevent another from sailing. When one plane crashes, it doesn't prevent another from flying. 
And I also said to you that when one man falls, it doesn't prevent another one to rise. And so the United Workers Party has risen to the occasion and the people of Rosa Central has appointed a candidate in Glenroy Soso Coffee who is going to give you true representation. I say so with confidence because I know my people. I am the one who have played with my people as a little boy. I played the hopscotch. I played skip. I played the draft with the boys. We played cards. We played basketball. We played football. And obviously we played cricket. We played marble holes. We played bloche. We were in the rivers. We skated together. We played all along. And I know that is the strength of unity that we have. And it's not because of politics today that we are going to divide ourselves because we know what unifies us. You know, Long Cock, Lele, all the guys on River Street, all the guys, you have Tomo, great footballer, you have Bala, the coach. And if I start naming people, you had Eddie, that boxer guy, who trained us as a young man. Saka boy, John Spolido, coach. These guys have helped, mentored us, and gave us that sense of understanding, gave us that sense of purpose, that sense of will and determination. And they have caused us to be what we are today. Especially, I'm so proud for the help that we got. Brothers and sisters, tonight, you must understand why is it I'm on this platform. Because the guy who represented Rosa Central after Norris Privo, you know the history of that, of that Judas Iscariot. And after Judas Iscariot did what he did, he asked me to come along with him to see the Prime Minister. And I said, Judas Iscariot, I cannot do that. He said, why are you not doing it? Why are you not coming with me? I said to him, brother, the people did not vote you for that. He said, do you prefer the leader of the United Workers Party above me? I said, no, that's not the case. Do you prefer the party than me? I told him, that's not the case. He asked me then, what is the matter? You cannot come with me. I said, brother, I put principle before you. Principle before you. And today, the people of Rosa Central, they have seen it fit in me. They have seen the honesty in me. They have seen the trustworthiness in me. And they know that I stand for justice and truth. And I can't betray the people of Rosa Central. That is why today, the people of Rosa Central would say, you can't say no to Soso. And we have made it clear in Rosa Central that Rosso is not for sale. Rosso is not for sale. And we vote in Soso for Rosso. So brothers and sisters, having said that, I have made it clear that I put principle above all things and I say to J.I., no, brother, I can't do that. However, this is serious business. I am now in the political ring. I am contesting in the Rosso Central constituency. And you have heard brother Errol Emanuel, who once upon a time was my manager at the Banana Company. And today I'm proud to say he is my campaign manager, I'm very proud of him. And everything that he has said on this platform, I endorsed it. It is certified correct, Mr. Emmanuel. I want to thank the hard-working team of Rosa Central, who has been on that journey, not because elections are called, because we have been on this journey to ensure that we retain this Rosa seat. And Rosa Central will be retained with the United Workers Party. 
So the hardworking constituency association of Rosa Central, I say thanks for the hard work. I say thanks for the work. It continues. The work never stops. And as I say in this tonight, let me say good evening to Onika Mula, a hard-working woman in Dominica. Give her a round of applause for us. There are many persons behind the scenes, which I will not just call their names, but I would like to say good night to Clifford Selle. Bala, that is one of our soldiers again. I've already said thanks to Brother Errol Emmanuel. He's one of the hardest working guys I've seen, and I'm proud that he's able to continue to do the work. Brothers and sisters, we have heard in recent times the candidate for the Labour Party talk about compassion. Compassion, so much so, she said she has a lot of compassion for the people of Formico. And of course, she embarked on a feeding program, which of course is good. I endorsed it, it's good. But if you so have compassion for people, the people of Formico, they have been living in a state, a state of, I would say, depression in this area up there. If you had so much compassion, why is it your husband is the prime minister of Dominica? He's also the finance minister. Have you not spoken to him to at least tell him, try to acquire the place in Formico so that you can elevate the living standards of people? How compassionate can you be if you did not raise that question to the minister of finance? I say to you people of Roseau, she is a fake. A big, big fake. And we should not go for that fake. And I also heard her say she met people hungry in Rosa Central and she came to their rescue. If you met children hungry, it tells you one thing. It tells you that the parents are really not able because they may be out of a job. And if they do have jobs, they do not earn enough. Why didn't you make it your business to ensure that they earn well so that today, the problem of hunger which you have identified, the parents could have been feeding their children today. It's all about a handout. It's about empowering people so that when you identify problems, you give solutions to problems. Is that correct? Is that correct? And today, we are seeing them as busy bee in the Rosa Central constituency. I'm going to tell you, that I do not trust these people and Rosa Central, you must not trust the Labour Party. So many years, 15, 20 years in government, they have been talking about this Pong development project. Some of the lands have already been acquired and to date, they have not paid many people and you keep lying for the people. When they realize that they wanted to show people that they are serious about doing something in Pong. Last year, Carnival, and last year, Independence Season, when we had Dominicans visiting, you know what they did? They took a bulldozer and started bulldozing the people. They did not even consult the people. They did not have a meeting with the people. And so we say to the people of Pong, that rest assured, we will approach this problem differently. You will be consulted and we will ensure that your living standards are up. We will ensure that you will have decent houses and different ho de decent housing for your family. I also learned that they're on River Street talking about giving out letters to acquire people lands. That's another fake. That's another fake. People of River Street, people of Riverbank, Take notice, this government is not interested in your well-being. They are just doing that in terms of showmanship. They are not serious. So if they are serious, then they should dialogue with you seriously and let you know the terms and conditions under which you are to sign the, the memorandum of understanding. Do not get into bad arrangements with this government because one thing I can tell you, 
the United Workers Party will be taking up the reins of government on the 6th of December and so we will deal with your problems. We will negotiate with you and ensure that we have proper housing units in Rosa Central so that you can live happily with your family. You have heard much about the Triple R project, the Rosa Road Reinstatement project, which has been long outstanding and we know that some work has been done with respect to sewage and some little work. But as you can see, after 20 years, are you satisfied with what labor has done in Roseau? Are you satisfied that your roads, your sidewalks, and housing development have gotten the attention they deserve? I'm telling you, you cannot you cannot make that mistake and repeat doing the same thing. Rosso Central is in the caring hands of Glenroy Soso Coffee and the United Workers Party. Brothers and sisters, let us examine all of our problems we've had in Rosso Central. Many persons have approached me and they have spoken to me about some of their personal problems that they have been going through. But more importantly, the young people. Look at sports today. We had the likes of Blue Stars, Kensbro, Greensleeve, James Central. All these were teams in Rosa Central. Sports was the mecca in Rosa. Today, we have seen nothing happening in sports. As one person said earlier on, I was, I'm very part, I am part of the Rosa Improvement Committee. And we made it our business to ensure that sports took its rightful place. We were the ones who were instrumental in getting that basketball court organized on Bath Road. But hear the insult. Hear the insult that the Labour Party has put us through. Imagine that just to do the fencing around that court on Bath Road, they brought people from Vickers to dig the trench to dig the trench. What an insult to the young boys of Bath Road and Virgin Lane. Couldn't they dig their own trench for their basketball court? They could have done that, but the Labour Party continues to disrespect the young people of Rosa Central and by extension, Dominica. We must empower our young people. We must let that Windsor Park be declared open so that people can access the Windsor Park so that they can play their sports freely. Because before this new facility, we had the ordinary Windsor Park and about 10 sporting activities were being played at a time. Today we can only play either cricket or football. What a shame. So we have not progressed. We have regressed. We have not progressed. We have regressed. And I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, we will ensure as a party that Roseau gets a new face look. The trains, the streets, street lights. Look at parking in Roseau. Look at the situation. We have been talking about parking and easing the traffic congestion in Roseau for many years. What have they done? They have done nothing. We are saying on the United Workers Party, we will solve these problems. We will solve this problem of parking and a multi-purpose parking facility will be constructed to ensure that Roseau gets a fair share of easing traffic congestion in the city. Brothers and sisters, we know after Hurricane Maria that a number of small businesses got ravaged and the government has disrespected the business owners in Rosa Central and by extension small businesses. We are duty bound as a party to revisit our policies on small businesses and to ensure that we incubate those who that have started and to give them that kind of vibe that they require. We need to train young people and to ensure we foster relations between private public partnership 
that needs to be enforced so that we can have a private, a vibrant private sector. I can tell you, this government has disrespected the private sector so much, but not even a cash incentive was given to them after Hurricane Maria, after they have suffered so much loss. Because these people, the private sector, still is considered the engine of growth. And they employ many ordinary Dominicans. I believe the government should have embarked on a stimulus, a package to ensure that the private sector people got that stimulus to at least inject into their businesses so that they could employ more young people. Look at the state of our gardens. The garden is like a car park. We cannot have a, a place of recreation being used as a car park. And in the absence of nothing, you will have to park there. But I can say to you, it is unsightly during the day when you pass through the gardens to see the gardens you is being used as a car park. That we will control and will ensure we have a diversion route so that vehicles will not be allowed to park in the gardens and they will be able to use the multi-purpose parking facility. Brothers and sisters, look at the ordinary, unfortunate brothers and sisters in Rosa Central. They roam the streets, but they have value. They have life still. What do we do to enhance their lives? Do we look at them as ordinary people that we say we don't care about? No. Respect them. They are human beings too. And so, I believe it is right that our policies are directed by putting an infrastructure, a facility, an institution where they can be, where they can be housed, train them, get them eradicated from that drug, rehabilitated from drugs, make sure you equip them with a skill so that when they are put back into the society, they can be working, they can be employed, and they can pay their fair share of taxes. So the ordinary men and women, our unfortunate brothers, our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. And brothers and sisters, I say to you that we remain committed to the task. A lot has been said about the development of Roso and Roso Central and more will be said again. But let me say to you that there is something that we lack in our development generally. And that also, too, can be extended in the region. You know, we have talked about developing the various sectors, whether it's agriculture, whether it's tourism, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's housing. We say that we need to give a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. We need to enhance and ensure that productivity is increased. I'm talking about work productivity is increased because productivity is the relationship between what you put in and what you get out. If you put in liquor, you will get out liquor. If you put in plenty, you will get out plenty. So we are asking our people to be productive, to give wherever you work, whether it's for yourself, to ensure that you give the right amount of work so that we get the necessary output. And I will say to you that we know that our agricultural belt is purely whittled. It is torn to the bone because this government cared less about agriculture. We know that there is a relationship between rural development and urban development. If you have a lot of work and a lot of energy put into the rural sectors, then people are put to work, production will increase, we will sell overseas our products and more foreign exchange will come. That will have a direct, a direct domino effect on our economy. And we are saying we need to stimulate the rural economy so that that can be reborn in the urban community so that more young people can be employed. We are saying to you that we need to empower young people, give them opportunities and to ensure that the opportunities they get, they can move with it. Too often, our young persons are placed in positions 
but we have not seen them increase their skills with respect to upward mobility. They need opportunities to move up the ladder in their respective disciplines. And so we need to urge them. We need to put facilities in place so that they can borrow and all the entrepreneurship ideas that they have, they can get it going so that they can build themselves to have a better quality of life. So all in all, brothers and sisters, we are ready to work. And you have a man in Glenroy Soso Coffee who has shown the young boys of River Street and all in Roseau how to put their shoulder to the wheel and to get results. I myself, I did not raise it much, but I'm pleased to tell you, hard work, hard work paid off for me. And today, I'm proud to say, I can do it on my, on my own. I've done it, and so you can do it as well. So brothers and sisters, this journey has begun a long time ago to get the United Workers' Party into government. Your responsibility is to ensure you continue to speak to each and everyone. Make telephone calls, knock the doors, help your respective power reps and their group, help your respective candidates in every corner of Dominica so that we can bring victory home. But I want to leave a message of friendship to you before I leave. The elections would have come and gone, but we remain Dominica. Irrespective to your colors, whether it's red, green, blue, or yellow, we are one country, we are one people, and we have to ensure that we do it for Dominica. I appeal to the freedom rights to come on board. I ask for your support. But I'm going to leave a message of friendship to you so that you know after the elections, we need to ensure that we preach unity. So I say to you, friends, let us be friends. Friends to the end, in spite of tears. Bonds, let there be bonds. Bonds that are strong throughout the earth. And though our journeys be on different roads, never let it be said that we forgot what once we were. But to the end, we will be friends. Let us be friends. Let us stand for Dominica. One people, one nation, one goal, one objective. Governance at its biggest. We are going to bring real change to you. The truth is, real change is here with the United Workers' Party and Lennox Linton. I will tell you, I admire Lennox Linton. I admire his unbroken honesty and his affection for people. Lennox Linton, as our leader, will ensure that the social programs that are on will not stop. He is a good man. Dominica deserves a leader in Lennox Linton. Let us give ourselves a round of applause. Have a good night. I love you, Dominica. I love you, Rosa Central. Let us be steadfast. Let us do it. I love you. Good night. God bless. But I sing for my brothers. Sing of our ancestors before we. Those who build the country. And help their dignity. Without jumping money. No political party goes Thank you. Me. Thank you, Mr. DJ. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you can't say no to Soso. Let's hear it for a good delivery from Glenroy Soso Coffee. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for United Workers' Party? Are you ready for your new government on the 6th of December? Are you ready for the leader of the United Workers' Party? All right, I can see you coming together because it's time it is the time you've been waiting for. You've been waiting for him. I know you have 
stood here, rain, when it wasn't raining, the time has come. We have kept you waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not in vain, because at this time, it is with pleasure that I welcome the man you have heard it said, an honest man, a competent man, a hard-working man, knowledgeable, ladies and gentlemen, one of the best, the best Prime Minister, the next Prime Minister of Dominica. Let's hear it for Honorable Lennox Linton. of the nations, thus to thee, our country we commend. Be thou her refuge and her trust, her everlasting friend. Rosa Central, good night. And uh, I just want to acknowledge tonight the Margot people in the house, yes? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a very great joy for me tonight to talk to you a little bit about our country, about our Dominica. We, the people of Dominica, decided many years ago that we want to live in a free country. A free country where the sons and daughters have the liberty, they have the freedom to develop themselves and to be happy together. We call it a democracy. And in democracy, the backbone is the right and the responsibility to choose who runs the affairs of the democracy. The right and the responsibility to choose by majority vote, who is going to be in charge for the next five years. That is a very important backbone of how we have decided to live as free people in a democracy. And so, when we come to a stage where we the people are asking for the system that we use to select government of the people, by the people, for the people, to be able to give us a fair result, to be able to give us a result we can trust as being truly reflective of our collective will, then we have a problem. And the problem we're having is just simply because the person that was placed at the head of government years ago has decided that he will prevent us from having free and fair elections as the backbone of our democracy. So we have a problem. Because in doing that, he is being disobedient to the law. In a country where we are to live and work together by the rule of law, and we have a supreme law, it's called the Constitution. And that Constitution gives the right and the responsibility for conducting free and fair elections to our electoral commission, not to any political party. But for the last 15 years, one man has decided, one man has decided that he is going to stand in the way of the Electoral Commission and prevent it from giving the people what the people want, which is a fair electoral system to choose government of the people, by the people, for the people. He wants to take away from the people 
their right and their responsibility to vote a government of their choice and make that government only a government of his choice so he is the only one that will ever be in government and the people will have lost their right to choose their government. That, what, that is what makes this time in Dominica a very important time. Because as the people continue to fight for basic electoral reform, as the people continue to fight for a clean list, and the people continue to fight for ID cards for voting, one man continues to stand against them. One man continues to make himself the enemy of free and fair elections in Dominica, the backbone of elections with integrity in Dominica. And we have a situation now where we are going into an election and we, the opposition party, we have concerns. We have nominated 21 candidates, which means that we intend to contest the election and we are confident of victory. But we have to be realistic about the risks that we face. And we have to ensure that all the people of Dominica, all the Christians of good conscience who want what is right for Dominica are not just wishing, hoping and praying for the change of government, but they are willing to stand and be counted among those who will defend our democracy and defend our right to have as fair an election as possible. Because everywhere we turn, those who are supposed to help the people are turning their backs on the people. The president of the Commonwealth of Dominica supposed to be the people's president continues to behave like the president of one man, Roosevelt Skerritt. So he is doing what Roosevelt Skerritt wants done as opposed to what has to be done in the best interest of the people. And I will give you an example. I'll give you an example. We have made objections to 1,343 names on the list that has been prepared after the final day of registration. The Electoral Commission, we understand, does not have the time before the next election to take care of those objections and to issue a proper list before the election. In those circumstances, the president of the country can adjourn the election date to give the Electoral Commission more time to complete its work. And we are waiting to see what is it the president is going to do and say because it has been brought to his attention that he needs to adjourn the date for elections so that the commission can complete its work and issue a proper list. I don't know whether there can be a proper list at this stage, but at least the list that deals, a list that is printed and delivered after our objections, our most recent objections have been dealt with, because that's the provisions of law. So we have that. And we have, in addition to that, all of the difficulties and challenges with the, with the hundred million dollars that Roosevelt Skerritt has taken from the passport money belonging to the people of Dominica for him to run his election campaign in 2019. He has been on this campaign since February. Every week launching another candidate with a half a million dollars, a million dollars. Every week in recent times, bringing in another foreign artist from wherever. And it doesn't matter what message the foreign artist gives to them, 
they continue because they cannot help themselves as far as they're concerned. Winning elections in Dominica is no longer about convincing people that you have a plan and you have a program that they can believe you have the capacity to implement for the people. It's about CWO. It's about smoke and mirrors. It's about tricking and deceiving people. That's what elections for them are all about. Because somehow they believe that the people of Dominica, in their minds, in their minds, they believe the people of Dominica have no capacity. They believe that they will succeed in tricking and deceiving the people of Dominica with CO and cool out money and so on. When the people of Dominica have lived through the last 20 years of misery, have lived through the last 20 years of seeing their savings disappear, have lived through the last 20 years of seeing their young people, their children, not being able to find jobs, have lived through the last 20 years of seeing their seniors more and more being incapable of taking care of themselves and being forced by this government to exist on $300 a month. After they have taken, out, taken away the ability to earn and put aside money for their last days on earth. And so, what Dominica is looking at right now, and what Dominica is excited about, is the dawn of a new day. A new day that will dawn when we complete the job of voting this corrupt, incompetent government out of office. And what is going to happen? What will we see? We will see the nature island of Dominica emerging to take its rightful place where we will leverage the assets, the gifts that God has blessed us with so that we can properly take care of ourselves. Not just feed and clothe ourselves, but also take care of our health. There is no other country in the world blessed with a range of plant substances that can attend to unmet medical needs from all around the world. Everything that the world tells you is good for this and is good for that, you have it right here in the Commonwealth of Dominica. And there needs to be leadership and management that can take care of all of that and bring it into a package of development that has us working, making money, taking care of ourselves, preventing illness, and helping people around the world to do the same thing. We have the best natural environment in the world. God has blessed us with green like he has blessed nowhere else. So why are we in this never-ending cycle where we just keep going back to our future? Instead of going forward, we keep going back. The future becomes our past. We are going nowhere fast. And the new day to dawn after the election of 2019 or whatever it will be will be a blessed time for the people of Dominica. Our agriculture will be fixed so that farmers can return to the days when they earn decent income from their farms and young people can be excited again about agriculture that can work for them and keep them in employment. Our tourism will find its true potential on the United Workers Party so that young people again and the people of Dominica generally will find good jobs in the service sector of Dominica. They'll find good jobs in manufacturing because we'll revive the manufacturing capability of Dominica. They'll find new jobs in the renewable energy sector. They'll find good jobs in construction. They'll find good jobs in sports. We will 
open up our sporting capabilities in Dominica <coughs> such that you will see more and more young Dominicans reaching the world stage of competition in cricket, in basketball, in football. That cannot happen now because they don't even have places to play. They don't even have fields to practice. The creative cultural industries where young people are excited and a lot of opportunities for the economic advancement exist. We will revolutionize that. We'll transform it. So you will see a Dominica in which the opportunities that young people have been denied for 20 years, all of a sudden, are mushrooming and growing and blossoming out in front of us. And a new time will come for the workers of this country. Because their pay levels will increase. Minimum wage will no longer be $4.05. Nobody in Dominica will have to work for less than $1,000 a month. And our public officers will no longer have to work for salaries that are not competitive with what they can make for similar jobs in the OECS countries. So our nurses will not have to go overseas. They will stay right here, take care of us. Our teachers will stay right here to take care of us. There will be new deals that protect the value of our nurses, our teachers, and yes, our police officers. I speak to them tonight because I know there's some of them here in uniform. It is time for our police to focus on the real professional work of law enforcement, as opposed to getting involved with the corrupt behavior of politicians in office using and abusing their office to denigrate and to hate members of the parliamentary opposition of the opposition police work is not about harassing people who stand up for their rights police work is not about bogus charges of incitement and cordoning off the court when some member of the opposition is down there creating confusion in the city when people are simply standing up for their rights, that is not police work. And the good police officers of this country know that. And they're anxious about moving on with their professional lives and excelling in the field of law enforcement and crime prevention and keeping our people safe. But right now, a lot of them, although they're in law enforcement, they live in fear. They operate in fear, fear of a brutal dictatorship that does not want them to grow professionally and does not want them to serve their country. And we say to them tonight, relax. In less than two weeks, you will have a new government in Dominica that will ensure Law enforcement is law enforcement and not persecution of innocent people on political grounds in Dominica. And so, what we are looking at is a Dominica that we'll be proud of. A Dominica in which we can dream again. A Dominica in which we can realize our worthwhile dreams. A Dominica in which our brothers and sisters who have left our shores will be happy to return to because we would have joined hands and hearts in the noble task of creating a better Dominica that they too will want to come and help us to build further. And that is why I speak to our brothers and sisters overseas tonight. Those who have left our shores, many of them for economic reasons, those who have an interest, a sincere interest in seeing us become better. But you're not here. You're overseas. We thank you for the efforts that you make, for the assistance that you provide to your families down here. But your family members are the ones 
taking the grind and facing the brunt of this administration that is taking care of itself and leaving the people to head to hell in a handbasket. You, our brothers and sisters overseas, must trust us and trust our judgment about what is good for us at this time in our affairs. Do not make the mistake of being so insensitive to the feelings and the concerns of your brothers and sisters at home that you will accept an airline ticket or a ferry ticket paid for with monies that belong to the same suffering people of Dominica that you would like to help. And where so many people are not working, where so many young people are unemployed and have to be lifted out of that situation of misfortune, you will watch that and accept the millions of dollars that this criminal enterprise will spend on airline tickets for you to come home to vote them, to keep them on the backs of your brothers and sisters in Dominica. And you say you love Dominica. But what kind of love would that be? What kind of love can you have for me if you are my brother or you are my sister living in America? You know exactly the struggles that we are going through here. You know because you, of where you live and what operates where you live that when government doesn't work for the people, then government must change. You know in your heart over there it is time for change. And yet you will accept the people of Dominica's money in the hands of Skerritt to send a ticket for you to come home to vote. Search your conscience. Search your conscience. And when you finish that exercise of searching, answer the question honestly of whether you will consider that an act of love to the country of your birth. The one that, regardless of where you roam, you still continue to call home. I say to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora this evening, it is time for change. And do not let yourself down. Because you are the Dominican. You are the one with the connections to this blessed land, this isle of beauty, this isle of splendor. So don't allow Donny McClurkin to pick up 200,000 US dollars from your passport money in Dominica to come from the United States down here to put on his blue and tell the people of Dominica that change is coming. But you in America don't understand that it's time for change. So you'll take Skerritt's ticket. Instead of coming down to vote for change, you will come down to keep him here. How much will you be paid? Donny McClurkin got paid half a million dollars of our money. And he watched the labor rights and told them in dressed in their red, change is coming. And they were not happy. So, so, so's rival. <laughs> so, so's rival came on stage with the red clothes. And first they gave him a little t-shirt. He said it was a baby t-shirt. Too tight. So then they came with the shirt. And the shirt, the red shirt was over, able to go over the jacket. The blue jacket he had and the blue shirt the blue pants and they gave him the red hat and dressed in red to their satisfaction now because they thought he was talking about change because he was in blue so they put the red on him and the first thing he told them and he was fully clad in the red with the blue underneath it's time for change he told them God is going to make a way for Dominica the change is coming. 
The reason you stand here tonight is because you know what Donnie McClurkin knows. You know what the pastor at the rededication ceremony for Dominica knew and said. There's a shift in the land. And those who felt that they were it, they are being removed. And isn't that what the polls are telling us? The polls are telling us that the Labour Party is on its way out. All we have to do is to make sure they do not succeed in stealing our election. So we continue to push for the reforms. We continue to push for the Electoral Commission to be able to do its work. And we continue to push for the obedience to law in Dominica and the adherence to the constitutional provisions of Dominica because it is Roosevelt Skerritt's refusal to obey the law and his refusal to adhere to the constitutional provisions in terms of free and fair elections why we are in the situation that we are today. No CARICOM leader is going to come and tell us what they want or understand reality for us. We know what the truth is. We know what we are fighting. And if they cannot understand where we are, and what we are trying to do for ourselves in this democracy, tell them to keep their opinions to themselves. We are really not interested. Because when you can stand, when you can stand as a representative of CARICOM, making an intervention on behalf of CARICOM, and say that you hope that the people of Dominica will be willing to abide by the rule of law and the constitutional provisions. You are indulging in flat out arrant nonsense and ignorance because you ought to know, you ought to know that it is Roosevelt's carrot who is disobedient to the law in Dominica and Roosevelt's carrot who is not abiding by the constitutional provisions which is why we are where we are but you can stand at the OAS stand in support of Roosevelt Skerritt who is unconstitutionally standing in the way of the electoral commission getting the reforms that the people want done we don't need that kind of representation out there in CARICOM it is a representation that is anti us the people and pro Roosevelt's carried the oppressor of the people of Dominica, the denier of our rights, and the one who has insisted that we must be subjected to injustice after injustice after injustice so he can continue to do what he wants in Dominica. And the people of Dominica are saying, we are not going down that road. We are fighting for the dawn of a new day when we finally will have our Dominica back. And we'll have the resources of Dominica available to us for our development as a people and our success, our progress, and our exemplary living on planet Earth. That's what we aspire for. To be the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to enjoy life in the global community. And when you listen to the Rosso Central candidate for the United Workers Party tonight. You realize the bright days that are ahead for the city of Rosso. Because you had a representative before, the one you voted in the last election, he didn't have the courage to stand with you. He didn't have the lalin to stay the course. He was swayed by the trappings of office becoming a minister of government, abandoning people, talking foolishness about wanting to help country, when in fact, the only person he wanted to help was himself. The evidence is now clear. But Rosso has a chance, a chance to be rid and be free of those people who stand to help themselves. Because in Glenroy Soso Coffee, 
You have a man of the people who stands resolutely for the people and for their best interest above everything else at all times. And we are good with that because that's who we are and that's what makes him a very proud and very important member of our United Workers' Party, Team Dominica. So we will say no to Mello, but we will never say no to Soso. That's our man. Go out and bring home even more votes for him. We know we're winning, but we want to win even bigger. We want to win even bigger. Don't take anything for granted. Keep pounding the pavement, keep knocking the doors, keep bringing the message home. The message of a new Dominica, the message of change, real change, that will make us who we truly are. I want to thank you for coming out tonight. I want you to keep your eyes on the program going forward. We have less than two days, two, two weeks to election day, if the president does not postpone it. But of course, we have to push hard to ensure that we're going to election with a proper electoral list. And that will require us to stay together and continue to push forward. So thank you. Thank you very much. I love you. God bless you. Aspiring leader, waiting to take over. And to know later, I see change. Coming for sure. Can you see the change? The change is coming. Let's hear it for our next Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Ladies and gentlemen, you know we always give you a little entertainment just so you can sleep nicely. So at this time, we are going to turn the microphone to Sol Pulse. For a little entertainment. Let's hear it, Mr. DJ. Just going to do a quick verse because you know this. Be not afraid. America, I love you. As you go home, be not afraid. United with the Start is here. Be strong. We're just going to give you a verse and a chorus. This is Scarlet Song and we're there. So you can enjoy yourself love you, as you America. walk home without no fear. All right. Say what then? We live in a time when the rulers of men are scornful of principles of godliness, wisdom and freedom. Be not afraid. For who, 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 who comes swiftly? Man! Who, 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 who comes swiftly? Be not afraid. Yeah. They use and abuse women, they raise no children. They live a life of wicked thoughts, corruption, embarrassment, and shame. Mm. So in order to maintain power against the very forces of nature, they need to have the citizens living in fear. Now can be not afraid, so but be not afraid. For fear is your enemy. I'm not afraid to speak of what oppresses him and slave himself to one man just like him. So be not afraid. For woke up suddenly. I sing just as the longest road comes to a bend. So to the evil works of evil men bound to. Soon to come to an end, I sing. Be not afraid, but as I victory of the United Workers Party is right here. I you can feel the shift, you can feel the change. Change is right here, so we're going home strong. I came all the way to help us so, so tell you, be not afraid. Godly men who don't care that the devil takes over Their kingdom they would kneel if they feel that they could cross a deal Ah, but who, 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 who comes swiftly? Man, 
Whoa, 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 who comes quickly? Yes! Now who comes the one to please? The employers and their bosses by victimizing their neighbor because today their party is in power. Ah! But they know what they do is wrong. And it's weighing their conscience down Because all men know that no man knows the hour Man, but be not afraid But there is your enemy I sing I'm not afraid to speak Of what oppresses him Enslave himself to, to a man, man just like him One man just as if you're afraid But be not afraid for who comes suddenly, I sing Just as the longest road comes to a bend So to the evil works of evil men Bound to, soon to come to, to an to end. end So so I have a verse to go for So so I have the final verse for you I have the final verse for so so Workers, enjoy your night. Love you. Always love you. Thank you very much. Have a blessed evening, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your way home. Be not afraid. Victory is right here with the United Workers Party. Thank you for coming and have a good evening. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. We urge you to have a very pleasant evening. Good night's rest. Safe drive getting home. Thank you very much. And don't forget, tomorrow...